I regret nothing. Hi everyone, quick disclaimer, this video is about an adult video game. So if that's not something you want to see or hear about, feel free to click off this video. Matane! Take care! Have a safe journey! Okay, great. The prudes are gone. In October of 2020, I created a Sushi Bites episode about skilled teaser Takagi VR, in which I pretty much stated that VR was the future of gaming whether we liked it or not. A bit of a bold claim back then, but hey. I'm not sure if the Takagi video is specifically the reason why, but something about my channel, and my interest in VR, drew in the attention of Bulgaria-based video game developer Repulse. The team had wrapped up their first VR game in 2018, and had started development on another, Eragon, the subject of this video. They reached out to me with links to their press kit and where to acquire the demo builds, and since then I have been closely watching the development of the game. Repulse have worked on and released three games, Heartbaked, a free-to-play, five to six hour long Otome visual novel with a baking theme, Experiment Gone Rogue, a VR on-rail shooter that combines a high-speed roller coaster with gunfire and strip clubs, and this game, Irrigon which is a combination of a Western RPG, anime-inspired visuals, magic, and swordplay. Oh, and erotic content of both the straight and lesbian kind. By the time this video is set to go public, the game will have been released, provided there isn't another delay. So if you like what you see, head over to Steam and check it out. I haven't been paid to make this video. If I was, they'd be asking for their money back by the end, because I have a nice big laundry list of complaints we'll get to. I was, however, provided a key for the full release, and I have been on and off testing Eragon both on Steam through its prologue builds, and well before that when the game was still distributed as separate prototype builds through Repulse's website. So in other words, I've been playing this game on and off for three years, and watching it progress has been fascinating. Now you might be thinking, here's Escape Brew British talking about an erotic game, it's just porn. That's not entirely the case. If you go into Eragon solely for its sexual content, I think you're going to be disappointed, but more on that in a bit. And yes, I'm fully aware that talking about an adult game on my channel looks pretty sus, but I feel confident in my assertion that my audience is old enough and hopefully mature enough for a discussion about smut. Eragon is targeted at an M-rated audience, but despite that, it is playable in a censored form if you so choose. It is not a perfect censorship toggle, I certainly wouldn't risk streaming the game even with censorship enabled, but we'll get around to that eventually as well. Eragon was successfully crowdfunded on Kickstarter. The game had already been in development well before then, and was only seeking $10,000 in funding. There are sentiments online about the game being a potential Kickstarter scam, usually focusing on the disappointing demo build and the low funding goal. Seeing as the game has been released, and though flawed in many regards, lives up to most of its lofty promises, I cannot in good faith call the game a scam. The campaign ended having raised a staggering $161,631 from 3,178 backers, and yes, you have to watch them all scroll by on the credits. Well, I don't want to be accused of not doing my journalistic due diligence. Turns out this game also raised a shit ton of money on Indiegogo as well. So now I can understand a bit more uh, where people might be coming from with the scam allegations. But nonetheless, the game has released, right? So... Still, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So what is Eragon? Eragon is a role-playing game with an emphasis on combat. It's not an open world game, instead being cordoned off into chapters with their own maps. These maps contain large areas that are crammed with enemies to defeat, hidden treasure chests containing loot and experience orbs to find. The combat is both hack and slash and magic based, with a small skill tree to enhance your magic spells. The core thing that sets Eragon apart from similar games is that it is playable in full in both VR and third person. You are not committed to one playstyle, meaning you can switch between them depending on how you feel. You may decide you want to start the game in third person with a game controller or mouse and keyboard, but for another play session you wish to continue your save file in VR. No problem there. So how exactly does the combat work between the two playstyles? In third person it's one of the triggers or mouse clicks to attack or cast magic, with the magic being selectable from a list of different spells by pressing a button or a key to cycle through them. In VR your weapon and various spells are attached to your belt. You then grab what you need from your belt to cast it, and you can quickly recast the last spell you used simply by holding the same trigger again. 
The gameplay feels pretty good in both third person and VR, and if I were to say there was any one element of Eragon that is the strongest of them all, I'd immediately point to the combat. In both third person and VR, this is the one part of the game that, combined with the sense of exploration, makes it an easy game to recommend. While it's not exactly the most ambitious game, the half a decade the small team at Repulse has pumped into Eragon shines through especially when you're in the midst of a good fight. Would be nice to have a toggle to place my weapon on the right hand side of my belt though. The game is voiced entirely in English, and there are subtitles in 12 languages. The acting is decent, serviceable. The cutscenes are animated, choreographed and voiced, with camera angle changes. Sometimes the inflection seems to change wildly during a single cutscene, but it's hard to find professional games that don't suffer from the exact same problem. It's a bang-up job unless you're a stickler for Hollywood quality acting, and it's honestly quite reminiscent of the cheesy English dubbed anime that inspired the game's development. The cutscenes are adapted from third person to first person when playing in VR, though not quite as elegantly as they could be, but again, we'll get to that. So what's the story like? You're Darek, a peasant boy who grew up in the boring farming village of Grass Point, pretty on the nose. He dreams of becoming a knight and fighting for the kingdom. He learns that the neighbouring city of Avok is looking for a new knight, but before Darek gets a chance to leg it to Avok for a job interview, his home is decimated by an army, his sweetheart is killed, and it's a pretty rotten day overall. Unbeknownst to the player at this stage, the army that burned down his hometown to a cinder is led by the game's main antagonist, the Harbinger. On his way to the city of Avok, Derek runs into an enigmatic young lady named Brenda, who accompanies him on his journey. She isn't who she seems, and the plot is essentially an exercise in slowly unravelling who she is and how she's the key to everything that's happening. Your journey takes you through sewers, swampland, caves, all the way to what can only be described as a pretty damn cold looking place. Around the halfway point you have to make a difficult decision as to which of the three Black Lotus Guild members will partner up with you. Erica, Lexi or Jenna. Up until that point of the game you've had your choice of all three elements, ice, fire, lightning. But the girl you choose will lock you into that element for the rest of the game. Erica uses ice magic, Lexi uses lightning magic and Jenna uses fire magic. Once having beaten the game, you can continue from the halfway point and experience the other routes, so there is replayability there. Each route has its own stages that are unique, which also encourages a few runs through just to experience them all. Worth it to see all the cutscenes too and their cringy glory. Hey. Who knows what's waiting for us in Swordbreak? Nothing we can't handle. <laughs> what? How, how do you come up with those lines? Oh, come on. Nothing we can't handle. <laughs> Fine, whatever. See you in the morning. The presentation is solid. The visuals are pretty nice. Most VR games tend to strive for either ultra-stylized or ultra-realistic. Eragon fits somewhere snugly in the middle. The girls all look pretty cookie-cutter, but that might just be the mildly overbearing style. There are moments of the game that use matte painted backdrops and they pop quite nicely. Whole game looks great in VR too. You can see the rough edges on everything, but that kind of reiterates the gamey feel of the fast paced combat. And unlike Skyrim VR, you can see more than 5 feet ahead of you without everything going blurry. There is an emphasis on platforming in the latter half of the game. If you don't have a cast iron stomach, I would recommend against playing in VR. You can either stick to third person, or I guess you can just get used to it. VR has its health risks for sure, especially with those who suffer vertigo when playing. Capturing VR footage wasn't so easy either, so trust me when I say it looks way better in VR than the footage may imply. Problems then. Eragon isn't a game without its fair share of issues. Having been playing test builds, there's a good chance that a lot of the issues I've experienced may be ironed out upon release as well as quite a few progression based issues resulting from the game trying to load my previous saves, these saves often being from earlier test builds. But I've experienced everything from melee weapons that don't deal damage, getting the achievement for maxing out my magic when I haven't, getting the achievement for beating a boss three sessions after I did it, visiting a tavern and seeing two of every interactable character stuck inside of each other, Hold on, are we still getting duplicates in the Black Lotus Hall? You must be out of your goddamn mind. Yes, there's an Erica by the pillar, an Erica at the table. I wouldn't have asked if there was any other way. There's an April by the door, and there's an April at the table. Erica. 
a girl having her entire body texture disappear after doing the deed. And this hilarious bug where I could knock over an NPC and talk to them while they rolled around on the floor. It's okay, I'm not gonna hurt you. But you, you killed them! Uh, I didn't have much of a choice. I'm sorry. Could even use them as a physics trampoline. Irrigon is far from a bug-free game. In many ways it does remind me of a Bethesda title with its medieval flair and prominent issues. So get this, while gathering footage, I've had another bug. This is basically right before the final boss. You have to have decided whether you want to have lightning magic, ice magic, fire magic quite some time ago. You're not allowed to have all three. Right now, I have lightning, ice, and fire magic. Um, I'm not supposed to have all three at this point. My magic skill tree has completely reset itself again. Uh, all my stats are back down to zero, and I have no money or, <laughs> or experience orbs. <laughs> this game! <laughs> Dunno, maybe I'm just extremely unlucky. So after loading that file and playing through till the ending, I got the achievement for beating all three girls' roots, but I haven't, because <laughs> I don't have the achievement for beating Jenna's root yet, because I haven't beaten Jenna's root yet. I love this game, but it is so broken. But I enjoy broken, so I don't know whether to cry or laugh. Hold on, am I making attacking noises during the credits? Yes. I could cast magic! <laughs> Other things I've noticed, the occasional spelling mistake in the subtitles or them not perfectly matching up with the voiceover, the censorship doesn't always work, despite having it enabled. For example, if I choose to waste 5,000 gold on a little hanky-panky with a shopkeep, I can see a few frames of the minigame when I choose to respawn from the pause menu. I also don't see why the non-VR executable needs to boot into both SteamVR and the Oculus app. It means I have to take the extra step of closing both of them each time. As I alluded to earlier, when playing in VR, the game presents the cutscenes from a first-person perspective. This means having to turn your body to see what's happening, which isn't always ideal. Not sure what specifically causes the game to get out of whack with where you're facing, but given VR can have countless setup variables, it could easily be the result of the way I specifically have it set up. Also, while playing in VR, the chapter images don't appear for me. They do when playing in third person, but in VR I just get the Steam VR grid void background thing. Oh, quite often in the VR cutscenes I find myself hovering way above the characters, or even in this clip, getting placed underneath the floor. I'm not mad, personally I find it kind of hilarious, but if I had backed the game at one of the higher tiers on Kickstarter, I'd probably be pretty upset if Irrigon had such glaring problems upon release. And the elephant in the room. If we look at Irrigon as an erotic game, it's just bad. The lovemaking sequences look like a Ken doll and a Barbie doll getting rubbed against each other. It just doesn't do anything for me. I have to be frank here, considering the games that Irrigon is up against in the erotic VR game sphere, it is quite simply embarrassing. The illusion of fucking, this is simply not. Did this game truly deliver on its promises then? In a loose sense, yes. In its current state, I'd evaluate the game as being worth $15 to $20, but if the erotic content was brought up to the same high caliber as the presentation, gameplay and acting, I could easily say the game is worth $30 to $35. At the time of recording, the price that Irrigon will sell for has not been disclosed but I suspect it will be at least $30. So working on that assumption, I wouldn't be able to wholly recommend Irrigon to Gooners. 
but as a solid, streamlined, WRPG-styled affair, the game has solid combat and a great sense of identity that might just make it worth that kind of price tag to the right kind of player. Thank you once again Repulse for giving me access to the game during its development, and I look forward to seeing what's next from you. Eragon was a labour of love, and the effort it has taken to bring it into tangible form is more than apparent while playing. I'm hoping to see some bug fixes and improvements made to the game's content over time. That's it, that's the video. If you like what you see, go check it out on Steam, put it on your wishlist.